Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 15 of Destination Unknown. I am Josh Elliott, here with my lovely co-host... Blake Connor, that is me, hello. And joining us this evening will be our very own Alec Kern, AKA Todd Smithers. Yeah, it's great to be here. Alec, of course. Alec, I'm very happy that you're on the podcast. I've wanted I, you to be on one for a long time. I'm, I'm yeah, I could say the same. Uh, it's about time, so. Oh, and also, you Dude, know, what is, I was gonna what say is, we're what is the, the last podcast back? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we are. This is the first video podcast back from yeah. a oh, yeah. hiatus of like out, six. We, all we do is interrupt each other. That's since okay. we can't see that's, each other. Yeah, that's fine. There's no context. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alec, is the last Rapture Films video you were in not some Mortal Kombat Seven? Um, if that, I don't know if that was before or after Indiana Josh Two. I think it's after. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. Where I was the but pizza guy. It has been a long time. It has been a long time. I'm ready to get. I'm ready to get back in it. Woo! Yeah, we need to. We need to get you in some skits, my friend. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, Alec, tell the people. Uh, Go ahead. Tell the people what. Tell the people what you're up to in the uh, in this season of life. Okay, so um, I work at this wonderful place called Camp Challenge uh, here near Bedford. Um, and I just live out here all the time in the middle of the woods and do fun things and play with big toys and have a lot of fun. And it's really, really great. Yeah. I think it's worth noting that Josh and I have also worked there for, Mm -hmm. I was there for only a week. Um, Josh, you worked there for the whole summer, correct? Uh, for multiple summers. Yeah. A couple of of times. So yeah, it's a great place. Helps a lot of kids and, uh, it's, it's good. So it's a good place and it's fun to be. Yeah. And it's as far as a job is concerned, it's kind of like a man child's dream. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, honestly, kind of. Uh, when I when I said playing with big toys, that's that's what I meant. So that's how I feel. Literally, it. literally not a joke. You're just playing. No, no, yeah, dude. I was trying to remember. I was talking with Alec the other day. Um, Josh, your your mom. She was. What did she do? She ran like the activities here. Or, like, what was her job when she worked at uh, the challenge? She, she was a director for a couple weeks of camp i remember so she would like she would plan out like every every like detail of a certain week yeah um and yeah outside of like the food she would plan like everything else for that week i remember different weeks have different directors so she she did she uh, she put on a shaving cream fight uh i was trying to remember like i was like i i vaguely remember that week and it's like i remember at the end of it i was so exhausted i was so sunburnt it was so much fun but like we did so many activities where it was like we just got disgusting and like i don't even remember what it was it's like i remember coming back to the cabin just covered in shaving cream and then after that like we all jumped in the pool i was wrestling like 15 fifth graders because like they they like make a bond they with you to yeah you and yeah just try to attack you i mean like in a nice real, way yeah like <laughs> if someone was trying to half drown you that's kind of yeah that's kind of what it is like if you were if you were a weaker man you would drown to those children. <laughs> right <laughs> you have to be you have to be able to stand up to them that's right you know yeah no, camp is, uh, I mean, it was a really, like, even though it was just one week, it was, like, really, it was a really transformative week for me. I mean, it was, first of all, it was exhausting. I can't believe you guys did it for, like, entire summers. <laughs> like, that that would take it out it's, of me. It's insane. Okay, dealing it's with all crazy. those children, like, um, oh, man. I I just remember, like, at the end of it all, I was, like, we, I got really good at dealing with, like, children's problems. Because you don't, like, you don't really know what that means until you're talking to children yeah. and they come to you with, like, what you call children's problems you know like oh he pushed me or he shoved me or he looked at me the wrong way and you're just like okay yeah and (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh i love i i just love every part of camp and uh even like being a camper which i also miss uh Mm -hmm. i have a lot of wonderful memories of being a camper um yeah. and some not and some not wonderful memories yeah <laughs> i yeah alec alec do you remember the year that we went to camp and um within 10 minutes of getting off the bus uh at camp <laughs> yeah, already know I, I, yeah i already know what he's gonna I, say <laughs> i broke jacob brazel's leg playing yes. soccer <laughs> yeah so everybody was happy we had just we had just pulled up to camp and we were getting ready and 
you know, you broke Jake, somebody's leg. Yeah, Jacob and Josh, they were going at it, and Josh just missed the ball and kicked the poor boy right no, in. No, 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 no. I, I no. thought that's what happened. No, I did not I miss th- the ball. We both kicked that- the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just Select, miss the selective ball. Selective memory is what I call that. <laughs> I but watched the it worst. with my own eyes, with my own like ten year old eyes. Yeah. I saw it. Well, there, well your ten year old eyes saw wrong. But the worst <laughs> part of fun things at camp. The worst part about that experience is the fact that he came back later in the week on crutches. Oh yeah. So and I just felt boot. I just felt obligated to do everything for him. Like I carried his <laughs> trays in the dining room, and like I just did absolutely everything I could to pander. You to fed him grapes and fed him with like, his leaf week. fronds. <laughs> I think my favorite part about camp is like all of the activities that you don't get to do like when you're an adult like all of these games that like mm-hmm. when would you ever yeah. I think we talked about this once before Josh like when would you ever play another game of like dodgeball yeah. or like octoball specifically <laughs> at this campground mm-hmm. it's like I'd never heard of that game um, for those of you who don't know there's like this big octagonal ring where everybody comes in and you take um, is, I think it's just one ball correct Josh? yeah it's a volleyball yeah, it's like a volleyball mm-hmm. and you try to hit people below the, the knee, knee. Yeah. and if they oh, get yeah. hit like in the shin or below they're out and they have to leave and i was so fascinated by that game and i spent so many hours just mopping the floor with children was, there's so much there fun. are kids that will spend every waking moment of their free time living in that octoball pit and it is insane the because pit. The, yeah i call it the pit, <laughs> the pits may be who i am <laughs> the pit. on a funny note about um uh, octoball games and octoball pits uh they have for people that don't know who come here for the first time they have been called the most absurd things like this uh this older fellow that came here last year and it, he had come here like 40 years ago and yeah a long long time ago and uh he came back uh for the first time last year to be a counselor and uh we walked out toward that area and he looked at me and said so what's the corrals for <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like uh we put the children in there, <laughs> which is technically what we do. Um, not Just leave it at that. We do not corral children here. Um, but yeah, it, amongst other things, that's the best one. But they have been called all sorts of things. And yeah. It's great. The game, the game itself is actually called Gaga Ball a lot of places. Yeah, Wait, really? That, that, yeah. Yeah, so if you have yeah. no idea what, what Octoball is, but you've heard of Gaga Ball, it's the exact it's the same, same game. Thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've been name. lied to, but I like that name. I like Octoball better. Yeah, that's, yeah, I do too. It's a significantly kind of better we, name. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the name we've adapted to. So I think something else fun to note, I don't remember if you were there um, the night we talked about this, Josh, but I remember um, Cody Butcher took me aside the week that I was working camp, and we basically, every single night, we went out and we did the equivalent of a podcast without recording it. We talked for like an hour, yeah. and he told me multiple <laughs> times that he'd love to do like a camp podcast and how much fun that would be and it's so strange to think that the podcast has made it back here well i was just thinking um about 20 minutes ago while i was in the shower because that's where i do all my thinking Uh, (laughs) that that you think i mean you think for a total of 10 minutes a day (laughs) i mean i I told you i just i just literally told everyone in the intro that i play with toys all day so i mean (laughs) that's that's you know come to expect um but i was just thinking that I mean, it would have had to been like eight years ago, maybe, yeah. maybe even longer. That like around the first time Josh and I met, we used to like take our flip phones into this room at, at oh, our church. Oh, yes, yeah. And I know he's gonna remember. And we used to do the Josh and Alex show, and we had it like wrote on the chalkboard <laughs> and everything. And we, yes! and so, and here it is coming to life. The Josh right, and right, Alex right, show. Right before your eyes, plus Blake. <laughs> yeah, the Josh and <laughs> Alex is, show. This is, turned Blake. In, this is turned into Blake and Josh plus Alex. Yeah. Josh and Alex plus Blake. Dude, Alec, I'm so glad that you brought that up because I had, hey. I hadn't forgotten about it, but I just haven't thought about it in it's, such a long time. It's a time. long time ago, man. We, I like, mean, we were just young whippersnappers back then. We legit just, we made a podcast before we knew what before, podcasts were. I think that was like before podcasts existed. Like, it was so fun. We would always do that one intro on the keyboard in there. <laughs> and then, you guys had a keyboard <laughs> intro? Yes. <laughs> oh, and we had like, uh, we had like reoccurring characters too. Uh, <laughs> We had like reoccurring guests. Uh, <laughs> one of them was a Ukrainian frog. Uh, 
I don't know if Josh remembers any of this. But Dude, Alec, your yeah, your incredible was... memory is shining right now. Because <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you remember any of these recurring characters, please bring them in. I'd love I'll, to hear from I'll, them. I'll think about the, it. The, the I Uk- think of I'd love to I'll hear from the Ukrainian frog. I just, um, I'm I just, telling you yeah. right now. I'm telling you guys right now that one of these podcast episodes is going to be just a come back for the josh and alex show <laughs> yes, yes. it's short short we're oh, gonna kick so we're gonna good. kick blake off of an episode and just <laughs> relive the glory days for a bit yes we should okay. we should go in the room of the church where we did it you guys record it in a closet <laughs> it wasn't quite in a closet but <laughs> well that room is <laughs> Oh my gosh, I just... Oh, I love that room so has much. had a wall knocked out. Uh, yeah, that room is twice the size now. it used to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway. Oh my gosh. That but is, in theory, we could still accomplish it. Isn't it that crazy is some how... amazing like, memories, <laughs> Like how, how some memories, like, you can just instantly recall and others, it's like, you forget about things, but you don't really forget about them. Like, Josh, the last time that you thought about that was probably a long time ago, but when Alec brings it up, it's like everything just comes flooding back. <laughs> oh like, yeah. It's just weird how how like organized your brain is. Well, I mean I'm a, honestly not really so much because half the time I'll walk into a room and not know what I went in there for. Or, like <laughs> I'll find myself like in the middle of doing something and I'm stop I'll stop and I'm like, what? What was I well, doing? Blake, like Well Blake, that's just dementia setting in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> early uh, onset uh, yeah. dementia. Yeah, sure. especially when you know, like you know, the jokes. It's like when you're cleaning your room and you find all the fun stuff, like the, that had been like tucked away, and you're like, like, uh, there's like pictures of people wearing like uh, like a knight's helmet or something like that. It's like when you're cleaning your room, but you get distracted at all the cool stuff you found under mm-hmm. your bed. Um, that's me to a T. Every time I try to like clean a room or just like set out with one task, it always turns into like thirty things. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mm. oh my gosh i can't i'm still blown away by that 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 (laughs) podcast before podcasts yeah i mean i was just running through in my mind things that i was going to talk about related to this and that was like the first thing that popped into my head i was surprised i remembered it but (laughs) well i'm so glad you did yeah that was like the first thing that popped in my head how do you feel um just hanging out around Bedford Alec. I've been here for like the past um, three weeks now that I've graduated college. I mean, it's been it's been a long time since I was here for like, I mean, I guess it's going on a month now. It's been a long time since I've been here for this amount of time, mm-hmm. like stayed here. Like, um, t- tell me about your post like high school experience, I guess, like from high school till now. Mm. How's that been? Well, I lived in Bloomington uh, and went to IU for about a year and a half. Yeah. Do not recommend. <laughs> Uh, just for you potential college goers out there. Uh, anyways, uh, but after that, I came back to town, uh, lived with mom and dad for a little bit before I got this gig. Yeah. Uh, now it's kind of, uh, it's a little bit different dynamic um, because I don't, I live about 15 minutes outside of town. Yeah. Um, and I don't go into town a lot. I don't spend a whole lot of time there. Yeah. I try to avoid it. Honestly. You're a mountain man now. Uh, You're growing the beard. <laughs> and so uh, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of just a different dynamic. So I don't really consider myself like living in Bedford yeah. because I, I don't. I mean, it's the nearest place. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like this is kind of uh, what my home is now. Yeah. And these are the, you know, the people that are around here is mm-hmm. like the town that i live in yeah really i mean if see i've thought about like if there was an apocalyptic situation this would be the perfect place yeah you've got all this <laughs> land in the middle of nowhere you have a you have a storage room with at least enough frozen food to feed you for a year like you know and canned food and all kinds of stuff that you could live on oh yeah and so yeah i mean this is yeah it's totally like outside of the norm as far as you know I'd, I'd see people from high school that still live in town. And I think that that's a little bit different than what I've got going on. I really like not living like right next door to somebody anymore. That's like mm-hmm. something that I did for the first time in Muncie was have like directly next door neighbors. Yeah. And like, it wasn't a problem until new people moved in the last year and they started throwing parties every weekend. Yeah. Well, when yeah. I lived in, when I lived yeah. in, when I lived in Bloomington and I lived in a dorm, first year for uh 
with three other people. Yeah. We shared a dorm with, I shared a dorm with three people. That was the worst experience oh. of my life. Oh. Was it like a small dorm room? Or oh yeah. It was like as big as my living room. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Lord. It's so, so tiny. Um, and then uh, the next year I lived in an apartment, which was a little bit better. But I just figured out that I cannot live around that many people. Sure. Like it just like the neighbors and like things like that. Just and the city life just uh, not my thing. I found out having um, an RA in uh, dorms sucks too. Yeah, because it kind of seems to go against the grain of you're your leaving. Well, yeah, you're yeah. leaving. You're leaving high school, and you, you know you graduate. You feel like you're on top of the world and you can accomplish anything and then you move into your college dorm and there's some person standing there with a whip saying like <laughs> you must be quiet at 11 p.m <laughs> i'm like what the heck i just thought i moved out of my parents house yeah like, this is the, this is the same thing yeah i i never liked the idea except our ra was never home yeah. so we didn't really have to deal yeah. with her at all you guys had your a huge dorm hours, johnson your quiet Gosh. hours started at 11 p.m it was something like that. I think it might have been midnight. I don't know. Oh my gosh, I, that's that's so early. I mean, no, I, not yeah. early. I said the wrong thing. That's so late. <laughs> yeah. Like our quiet hours were nine p.m. and I was Woo. so thankful for it. Our quiet hours were that early, like on finals weeks, um, yeah, and stuff like that. But yeah, not really any of the other times. Dude, Bloomington is a wild place. I remember I went I went there at uh I well no, I arrived you can at say eight, that again. I arrived at eight AM with my friend Corey. Uh we were we traveled all the way from Ball State to Mun or to <laughs> Ball State to Muncie, Ball State to Bloomington for a Super Smash Brothers tournament, no doubt. Nerd. And we parked at the t- Yeah, nerd. I know. We Major parked at the nerd. top of a uh Major parking nerd garage. Alert. And we look out at eight in the morning and there's a party going on yeah. and there's like 30 people on a roof yeah. at eight in the morning yeah. on a Saturday, like 30, like drunk, like 18 to 21 year olds, just like hanging off a roof. I'm like, what is this place? We've just wandered into a lawless wasteland. It's like the wild, they're, wild. They're wasteland. throwing, they're throwing like burning couches off of this roof and like... I, 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 now we were talking about Bedford and Bedford is fine. If I had a choice, I would out of like out of a hundred times, I would go to Bedford every time I try to avoid Bloomington at all costs. Yeah. Uh, I went to a, a small joint up there last week uh, for a concert that I really wanted to see. Yeah. Uh, and that was worth it. But just having to deal with the people and the traffic and the parking situations, the, the, and the, like that's just the general vibe is just yeah. weird. Like, it's uh it's too um to me it's like too many things going on at once yeah uh because you know the university brings just this weird dynamic of like i think you find that a lot in the people who are just from bloomington like the kids like the kids that like would have graduated from bnl and now live in bedford like yeah what they call townies in bloomington like yeah. the people that live there, live there and, and didn't go anywhere they're so like they're so weird because it's this mix of like an a college kid but not not. (laughs) and it's just yeah Yeah. you just have this also like is such a weird collection of people because that's what i'm saying yeah you just have for one like mishmash for one like on one hand it's like a pretty big like town when school is in session and then during like the summer everybody from iu leaves and then it's, it's a like ghost town. it's low key, yeah, like a ghost town. But yeah, the people it's, that it's are really there weird. are like just a like the strangest collection of people. Mm-hmm. It's like none of you go together. I don't know how yeah. like all of these people have like accumulated to this place. Yeah, and but, whilst my time living there, I met just about every single kind, <laughs> every type of person. Yeah, and it, <laughs> it's just like, am I in Southern Indiana or am I in the like the Bronx, <laughs> like like I'm about to get jumped. Like this is horrible. Anyway, 
it, it, I use campus too is so like spread out. Like I never yeah, know when huge. I'm on campus. Like if I've left campus, if it, I'm on it's, campus, it's almost like the campus, the university is a parasite, just <laughs> it's just slowly, like infecting just the city, slowly consuming the city. <laughs> Wilmington will be mine. Yeah, like yeah, it, it's exactly what it is. It's really really weird. It's just like leeches off of the town. Well, dude, Indiana University. I mean, they've taken over like IU Health. Yeah, IU Health is like everything it's around huge. Indiana. It's like where my mom works. It's like where my mom gets frustrated because like. She told me that people see, like, she's been talked to, like, people will see her scrubs, and they're like, oh, I've seen your coworkers. She's like, wow, we don't work together. So yeah. Everybody has the same scrubs because yeah. we're all under this big umbrella organization. Right. Yeah. Um, well, there's, what is IUPUI? Indiana University? Purdue, Purdue University. University. Indianapolis. Yeah. Indiana, like, what? <laughs> it's just a con. Well, I was, what I was going to jump to about the uh, parasite thing. Uh, <laughs> if you remember a dear old friend of ours uh, from Shawswick, now we're jumping back schools. Sure. Uh, was the elementary? Well, you went to Heltonville. I went to Heltonville yeah. Elementary. School, but we both yeah. went to the same middle school at Shawswick, and there's Played football this football delight. Yeah. Did. Rest in peace, <laughs> Coach, Coach Daly. Daly. Coach Daly, we won't forget you, brother. Um, oh, man. But anyways, there is a dear old man there by the name of Mr. Smith. Um, oh, rest in peace, Mr. Smith. In, man. This is making me sad. Yeah, okay, we're, getting, about we're getting real sad. Past. But he used to always talk about how uh, when they were planning uh, Indiana University that they were originally planning to put it in Bedford. And because at the time, you know, in the mid-1800s, the limestone industry was booming. The town was really going up. And Bedford was really kind of, a, you know, a happening place. Yeah. But thank God. <laughs> they decided to put it in Bloomington. Because um, think about it. If if IU was not in Bloomington, Bloomington would just be another Bedford. It would yeah, be. It would just sure. be another Bedford. It would just be another Martinsville, another Seymour. You know, it, it wouldn't be any different. Than, College towns, like, erupt. Yeah, you it's know? really crazy what the, the dynamic that a place like that brings to a small town like that. I think you find that in a lot of places. Yeah. Josh Johnson is kind of plopped in the middle of nowhere, though. You know, dude, I know. I love that about Johnson. Uh, the school that I just graduated from, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, it's a small school, so it wouldn't surprise me if you haven't heard of it. Johnson University. But it's yeah, smaller it's than like, our high school was. it's like five <laughs> miles uh, off of like a highway in Knoxville, Tennessee, and it's just in the middle of the country. And it's so nice because like mm -hmm. it's quiet and the campus is pretty small to begin with. Like, uh, there, there's not a huge, like, uh, student body. And, like, the weekends, the campus is, like, dead. But it's oh, also yeah. just beautiful. And, like, you can see the mountains from campus. Like, there's a beautiful mm -hmm. river. Like, the beautiful pot. Like, it's just such a pretty <laughs> campus. But it's just, like, <laughs> kind of like a hidden gem in the middle of nowhere. Dear old dear old rocky top i love johnson dear University. old rocky but, top it's like uh it's like you you have to um you know like i, I feel like all the time uh, this is this is switching gears a little bit but it's like i feel like i have this vision of the future for myself like where i want to go or what i want to do and what i want to be and i always default to like the same few scenarios i'm like mm -hmm. one of them is like maybe ending up in the big city somewhere doing stuff where everything's alive and everything's constantly doing that. Like just everything feels like it's living and breathing. And another scenario that I've always wanted is like one day I want to wake up on like a ranch in Idaho and just like sit on my back porch. I, I, I was going to the beautiful I, mountains. I, I was going to discuss like my unlimited money scenario. Uh, and literally it was the same thing. Yeah. It just, uh, <laughs> Wyoming, not Idaho. Why, no, they're, 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 they're all beautiful. Like, dude, you go, you go like, uh, Northwest, you know, Montana, oh, Wyoming, yeah. Idaho. It's like, I guess I can't speak from experience. I'm, sp I'm acting yeah. like I've been there, but I've never just beautiful yeah. places from everything that I've seen. I've never been farther West, uh, than my last time I calculated, uh, Decatur, Illinois, Decatur, Illinois, dude. And I brought <laughs> you back that cowboy hat. You gotta yeah. go to Texas. I ha now I have to go to Texas. <sighs> yeah. I was the <laughs> recipient of said cowboy hat. You want to get know. it? Do you know where it's at? Uh, yeah, it's right over there. Hop over there and hand me that, would you, son? Oh, gosh. Right there on that there shelf. Oh, howdy, I tell you what. Oh, I got to sit up now. <laughs> I was slouching. Mm. Alec, you've undergone such a transformation from when we were in high school. 
Like if if like I were to look at a photo of you, I feel like <laughs> out of all of us, like what you we don't have changed the most it, by far. You don't do anything in post in this, do you? <laughs> oh, what you mean like show a photo of you on the screen of what you look Please, like? No. Of course I won't do that, Alec. I won't blow up a giant photo oh, of you and I never freshman. thought I never thought you would. <laughs> never thought you would. Oh. No, oh just the uh, like every time I see you, the beard's a little bit thicker. Mm-hmm. And I can I can just admire that. I'm a little bit thicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm really hot. <sighs> um, do you guys ever, I mean, like talking about, you said the unlimited money scenario. Do you guys, like when you think about the future, like I never see it as one thing. I see it as kind of like branches. Sure, yeah. And I almost see it as like probabilities and possibilities. It's well, like, you have well, to have if, a plan B. Yeah. It's like, well, if I do this. Or if I do this, you know, that turns into these things. Like, mm-hmm. where will I want to go from here? Mm-hmm. Um, what, what, what are you guys thinking for your futures? I guess oh, big, man, deep, deep, open-ended. This got question. deep, quick. Yeah, Whoa. it did. Do you want to go first, Alec, or do you want me to? Um, I guess I'll go first in kind of the branch fashion. Sure. Because um, <laughs> with my current career now, like, I could, you know, I could definitely and I would definitely be happy with taking you know taking this farther and doing this as a career um but if like you know if things change or you know plans change and things like that happen like that you know I would just love to live on a farm somewhere and yeah. just you know just do that kind of thing uh because the the idea just fascinates me like my boss here um he just bought a property that they're kind of fixing up uh, that's in a really, I mean, it's not even a town. There's like seven houses in a church, really, really tiny, but it's close to here. And uh, they're going to make like a homestead out of it and live off the land and not quite off the grid. Yeah. Um, but, you know, very primitive style and, you know, raising their own food and, you know, stuff like that. And it's, and that stuff is just really fascinating to me. Yeah. Uh, Cause I, I don't know if there's just something about it that I find fascinating. Yeah. And so that would be kind of like the other route that I would think I would go. Uh, Josh, what is your, your dream, uh, unlimited money plan, your future? No, that's what we were talking about. <laughs> your future. Oh gosh. Let's get back to deep real <laughs> fast. I don't like this. All right. Um, so I went to school for youth ministry and I obviously foresee myself doing that in some capacity whether it's like in a church or like maybe at a camp somewhere. I think that'd be awesome. Alec and I have actually talked about like the dream of working at the same camp, like running it together, uh, which would be very cool. Um, Honestly, like I could see my, my life going in a lot of different ways because I would like to live like out in the country or at least outside of a city. Like I don't want to live in, like in in town like in a city i that's just not appealing to me uh kind of like what we were saying earlier like oh, neighbors yeah. not a huge at least fan. a mile away but um the the dream scenario is a wife a big dog uh like five oh, children wow. um, yeah we talked about this last time too all <laughs> <super yourselves. laughs> five children <laughs> have an army oh yeah Yes, I want. I want a small. Uh, I want a small army. Uh, Gotta as, have someone to defend the And I want to property. raise them as uh, as my own. But uh, this is actually something weird that I've been talking about for a while. Like, if I'm not in a relationship of any capacity when I turn yeah. thirty, I think I'm gonna adopt a kid. Yeah. Because my wife does. My my wife. My life does not need to wait for a woman, and I want to be a dad. So. If I'm not in any relationship at uh, 30, what's, what's the phrase? I'm going I'm a, to adopt I'm a, a child. Strong, independent man. And I don't need no woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's the phrase, right? That's respectable. Yeah, that's yeah. the phrase, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, on that, on it that same note, uh, a friend of mine that I've made also uh, here at camp, we decided if we both get to 40 and we're still single, we'll get married for the tax benefits. <laughs> 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 Which I mean, like. Sure. Uh, yeah. Hey, it's not even for it's not even for happiness. It's oh, just I mean, for we're taxes. great friends. Like it would be like it'd be fine. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But re- yeah. But really for the yeah the tax benefits. The tax benefits. Um. <clears throat> no. So my uh, I guess my ideal future. Um. 
or the future that I see for myself. I don't know. It's it's very cloudy um, as far as like the way that I see things going. It's kind of all up in the air. I've been um, really thinking a lot now that now that I'm graduated because it's like it's still setting in. And I know that's crazy. Like I should just I should just move on. But it's like now that I'm done taking classes, like it feels like for me, and maybe so for you too, Josh. I don't know that I'm still on like summer break because like this is what it's always been. But like it's not. This is life. I'm done. Like I need to go out and do something. Yeah. Um, so I think the only thing that I really know I want to do is I know I want to travel. Like um, regardless of where it is, I um, I applied for a passport the other day, um, not really having a destination. Like they asked me where I was going. I was like, ah, nowhere that I know of. I just want to have it on hand in case. Like I don't necessarily have the funds to just get up and go anywhere, but it's like uh, just from the small amount of traveling that I have done, I, I realized just how big the world is. And I want to see as much of it as I can. Like, um, first things first, I want to make sure to say that I've seen all 50 states, or at least I've been there. Like, uh, I think that's something, Yeah, that's I think it's cool something goal. that every American should really strive for. You know what I mean? Cause Except it's like California. I, well, that's where I'm thinking about going though. You know, not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> my sister, uh, he's already been to California. Been to California. Uh, yeah. yeah. My, my sister will soon be, uh, moving with her new husband uh to san diego really yeah i didn't here, know that here in a few months um they he is in the <clears throat> navy and he will be stationed there wow um, yeah here in the coming months uh and she's like you gotta come visit me you gotta come visit me i'm like i'll meet you in nevada <laughs> 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 like you could yeah uh or like arizona do you just have like moral like reprehension it, it's like, not it's not america it's not <laughs> all right Sure. <laughs> it's not America. If you have to put on every single thing ever made that this may cause cancer, it's not America. Sorry. You mean like everything that comes out of California? <laughs> yeah, pretty much cancer. <laughs> well, I'm saying that they they so Alec, they have to. Al Alec, are you uh, are you not interested in like traveling outside of America ever? You know, uh, maybe if I won the lottery or something. I do have one. I, I do gotcha. have one destination because I have part of my dad's family that still lives in Italy. I'd like to go and visit them at some point. Um, but other than that, uh, the rest of the world besides America disgusts me. <laughs> so, oh <my> so, <laughs> oh um, gosh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's the greatest place on earth. Why would you want to go anywhere else? I mean, geez. <laughs> I mean, you're just going to get regulated we we you know, you up know, and down your backside I everywhere else you go. I so. can't disagree with, like, <laughs> uh, I can't disagree with your thesis in the sense of, like, I, I just, I I wouldn't call everywhere else uh, disgusting. You know, it's like, I, I would love to see other places. I understand uh, this is, oh, you know, by the way. Happy it's Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Day. Yeah. yeah, happy Memorial Day. Yeah. Thank oh, you gosh. to everybody out there who has served. Yeah, um, seriously. Yeah. No, for sure. We, we would not be doing this if it was not for uh people who stepped up and you know took took the call and you know and even give their lives in some this podcast respects. is sponsored by america <laughs> love it or leave it <laughs> yes that's exactly right love it or leave it yeah uh because yeah america the place where white guys everywhere can come together and talk about things that nobody else cares about that. <laughs> I think it's a great place for all kinds. You know, of I, I it's uh, it's uh, the melting pot. I mean, you you, you really uh, I'm I'm a I'm a big I'm a big pro American. I'm not. No, I think there's a difference in like uh, in ultra nationalism um, and just like pride in your your nation. I, I think that there's nothing wrong with having pride um, in a nation. I think it's if that is solely the thing that you identify as. Yeah. You know, like nobody should ever be just one thing it's like i'm an american it's like what are you like what do you do it's like oh, i'm a red-blooded patriot it's like oh you're kind of crazy is what you are if you if you say like that's all you are <laughs> all you are is a red-blooded patriot what's well, the same Zooms thing in on yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it's, it's the same thing as just like uh if you say you're just one if you say you're just one of anything you know it's like um it's what, never good to generalize well it's never good to generalize it's just like it's good to be diverse first of all in like in your hobbies and like mm. the things that you do it's sure. like uh i think i've talked about um the whole super smash brothers tournaments this is <laughs> like i think i might have talked with you about this before Josh. Bringing this stuff i bring up. it up because it's like you you uh you go to these places and you meet some people who just like 
that's what they identify with. Like that's yeah, all they talk that. about. Mm -hmm. It's all they know how to be. Like yeah. their existence is Super Smash Brothers, and it's like isn't I that agree kind of that sad? <laughs> I agree that there is more to life than just one facet of whatever you latch on to, and you know it's it's fine to identify yourself with you know in something uh but not something just don't solely. lose yourself to it yeah yeah I, I think that that's it i think that that's like you know yeah i think that's like that with everything if you know if you just sacrifice your life to one thing then you'll never get to experience a lot of other great things yeah that, uh that yeah. life has to offer you know if you just yeah that's yeah that's basically i don't know where i'm going with that mm -hmm. i think you might have had it thought out better <laughs> no than I, I did love, but i love i'm America. just gonna run yeah. with it <laughs> i'm just gonna run with it i was waiting to see if josh would say and something pause to breathe <laughs> sorry there was just so much patriotism in the room there for a moment this breathing um, moment is brought to you by oxygen <laughs> <laughs> Nope. I've got to be honest. I, I didn't understand a lot of what you guys were saying because, like I said before we started record, recording, to me it sounds like you guys are like talking and oh, because the because we're talking to like, the Bluetooth speakers. I, I yeah. wonder what that would sound like, someone talking inside a refrigerator. Well, if they're stuck in a refrigerator, they probably don't want to be there. It would probably sound like muffled screams of, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, you've just described exactly what I mean. <laughs> so it's it's like it's double bad. What just are... shrieks of pain. <laughs> oh, you know it. Um, going back to the uh, the whole the whole idea of travel, uh, one of the places that um, I really want to go. Um, I, I might have talked with you about this. Alec. I feel like I've shared this idea with a few people. I really want to go to Iceland. I really mm -hmm. want to see like uh, really want to see the Northern Lights. Yeah. First of all, you can't really like. I'm pretty sure there's nowhere you can see that in America, uh, but like if you, you you go out there and also very it's just rarely. like very yeah maybe like Maine if that or like or Alaska Min Minnesota Alaska, Alaska would the, probably yeah probably yeah, be your best shot. I, I know I know very shockingly little, um, but just I don't know it's uh, it's really it's a really beautiful place um, out there. It's a lot more expensive than it is in America because mm. I've done a little bit of research. Um, but man, if you went to some of these other countries you could really live like a king with like the u.s currency conversion like when you like when you convert your dollar bills to like the currency in other places yeah man you'd be yeah. rich mm -hmm. <laughs> well there's something that uh, a statistic that my uh pastor brings up often about living in america and how we have it way too good uh, I think, and I might be butchering this here, uh, but I believe that if you make over thirteen thousand five hundred dollars a year, you are in the top one. That's American dollars. If you make at least thirteen five a year, you're in the top one percent of earners in the world. Wow! <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad we're back in the in the swing of the podcast where we'd like throw out facts that we have to check on. But uh, if that feel free to you know tear me if apart. If that statistic, but, if that statistic is accurate, that's yeah, insane. Cause, uh, yeah, because that's you know that's the value. You know, people are always like, well, you know, the American the American dollar is going down the tubes, and it, it's just all pocky. It, it just doesn't. Yeah, it's just not real. It, you know. Man, I like I I don't know how many times I've had it explained to me. Like I I feel like it, I feel like just a dumb idiot. I don't know how inflation works. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't get it. Like people have explained it to me, and then like they'll like they'll start to second guess themselves yeah. like, when they explain it to um, me because I'm like it doesn't make sense to me. I'm like why can't you print more money? And they'll say well because like inflation like if you introduce more money then like it devalues the dollar. And I say but how? How well, does it? If you have it? if you have explain inflation to me, Alec. If you have, if you have a dollar bill, <laughs> yes, and is worth one dollar, yes, then you, and the it, and it's all in like the vat, like not the not the dollar amount value, but how many of them there are. But how can you track that? Like, how is there any possible way to like know the amount of circulating money? A lot smarter people than I, sir. <laughs> I, mean, I guess like that's like. If I were to, you know, like uh, you're talking about counterfeit, like if you were to counterfeit a hundred million dollars or something mm -hmm. like that, 
You'd does be that? <laughs> well, I mean, well, well, sure, but assuming you're not, assuming okay. you're not, yeah. does that devalue the dollar bill? Yes. Somehow it does. See, like that's what, like because just... I th- I think it's the idea. I'm to- I, I, I'm not. I'm just gonna be talking out of my room. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna try to. I'm not gonna think, try to explain this. I know that I'm I think be wrong. I have. I think I have a. I think I have a bit of an idea of how it works. If if you want. Me yeah, to give me give me your it. thoughts, Josh. Explain but, inflation um, to me. Okay, so, so, of my understanding, and also this could be completely <laughs> wrong. Uh, we're just a bunch of guys not qualified to talk about this, and we have no it's idea the what we're talking. Economics about. podcast. But we're not what have, know anything. What I have, what I have always thought is that the value of a dollar is determined by the amount of gold that America has, because gold is like a uni- like a. Uh, worldwide like universal thing and it is like that's why gold like holds its value because it is like it is the value yeah you know what i mean uh so if you print more money then you aren't create you aren't also creating more Mm. gold Mm. to back it so so essentially what you're doing is you are by printing more money it is in effect lowering the value of Mm. the money that you're printing because it's essentially just paper that's kind of what because at the end of the day like the world works on goods and like the transferal of goods so like food that kind of thing um and because gold is pretty and people (laughs) like it and people have always liked it it is like a bare bones like um yeah facet of like value i think i guess I, like yeah that's that's how no, I and that makes sense it. and the the other way that i've thought about it is like you know if you want to if you want to pay for something if there are only let's say there is only you know one dollar bill in existence yeah you know this is hard this is hard for me <laughs> i don't know but the thing the um <laughs> if you're going to pay someone for a good or a service and you're going to pay them with a certain amount of money, well, that if you have, if there just keeps getting more and more money, that's true with anything. If you just keep pouring more and more things on something, I think the one individual thing is going, Mm -hmm. especially with money is going to become less valuable as the whole increases I think the individual decreases. I think it. I think it's also affected by the like international conversion rate. Like it, it's yeah. it's it's affected by mm-hmm. like what other countries sure. will convert your currency to. Because yeah. like what was it? It was World War. Was it World War One when it ended? Like German currency mm-hmm. became like worthless. Yeah. I don't. You know. Mm-hmm. I'm like like we said after I'm the talking after the re- right after now. the reparation. It's. I, I just remember. They taught us about it in grade school. Man, it's been so long ago now. You were learning about World War One in grade school. They they taught. I mean, they were they were talking about economic. <laughs> they were talking about like the idea of inflation and how they they they. You took economics. Yeah, in they grade told school? me that they had to bring wheelbarrows of money <laughs> into the shop to buy a loaf of bread. Yeah, that's how bad. Yeah, it we watched Schindler's List in first grade. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because that's because that's because as a result of the war, like Germany was in yeah. so much debt that like all of like everything that they had was essentially like yep. worthless because like the country itself was just in yeah. shambles and they owed so much money to yeah, so you think about places. like countries with a proud history like america it's like we've been built on freedom and we fought all these wars and all this stuff and like you you can Undefeated come yeah <laughs> back to back world war champs yeah, uh, yeah, vietnam yeah <laughs> okay. Didn't count. okay uh you but then you think about like, you think about like germany and like how not that long ago it's like if you like bring that up to somebody like just like the german history they're kind of like they'll just like scratch their head like oh yeah like that did happen i guess <laughs> like it's not it's not the fault of a german citizen but it's like you don't you're not like proud of that you, <laughs> you know yeah, like you, you can't get take so much the, national pride you could, in that you could keep you could get into some steep territory doing that <laughs> on america I don't really, I don't really want to do that, but you could. Yeah, <laughs> you could get into some. It's not our fault, but some people did some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, now I sound. Oh, that's 
yeah, that's going to be a sound bite. Um, CNN, there you go. There's your sound bite. <laughs> sure thing. CNN, Holy MSNBC, you know, I, well, Alan, there's your take, sound bite. Just take solace in knowing how few subscribers we have. This will never <laughs> surface to the light of day. Maybe in 10 years, yeah, someone will find it. When we you blow know, up. You, you, we said that about your most viewed video ever, and then look what happened. So... <laughs> We said that it what we were just, <laughs> hey, this is just another video. You know, there's yeah. been this big cliffhanger and we're going to try to, you know, we're going to spoof some answers. <laughs> and uh, yeah, at 200, what is it, 215,000? I don't, I don't know. There. I don't know what it's at now. I thought last I checked, I thought it was like 150,000. It surprises me what videos we put out get the most views. Dude, tomorrow never comes. Just crested, um, yeah, fifty thousand. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah. Fifty thousand people. Did you just put a bunch of hashtags? It has more than Luigi's Mansion the musical, and that makes me very sad. Did you put like a bunch of hashtags in the description or something? Well, or? no, dude. Zombie movies on YouTube are popular, dude. I don't yeah, know how many people have seen you fail at the knife throwing. You know, because that's the and one where you started. Knife people throwing. still. Yeah, like, People still comment on it, like to this day. A comment just the other day was talking about how I know, good it and was. it's just like what. And uh, spoiler alert: don't go back and watch it because it is. We'll, not we'll put a link good. in the description to how bad <laughs> it is. <laughs> <It's Christian>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, we finally just said it. Mm. Subscribe, like, and comment. Oh yeah, we haven't we haven't done the plugs yet. Um, hey, smash that mother effing like button <laughs> down there. <laughs> Hit the bell for Bam. notifications. Everything that I'm saying right now, I've just heard other YouTubers say. Can I do like, I hardly know what it means. Yeah, bookmark the page uh, <laughs> um, because the subscribe button doesn't work anymore. Um, download um, download the upload <laughs> past the firewall. I was doing more of the Steven Crowder. Yeah. Uh, by the way, let me just get... Let me Blake just was give referencing a plug. An old let me video. just give a plug to Steven Crowder. His channel is amazing. <laughs> His show with Crowder, right? Louder with Crowder. Mug Club, $99 annually, uh, $69 if you're a student, veteran, or military currently, uh, and it's great stuff. And if you're unaware of who that is, that's the meme guy with the Change My Mind. Yeah, he's the Change My Mind guy. Yeah. Um, he's the yeah. meme well, guy. That's, I feel like that's where more people will know him He's the from. guy with the no, meme it is, sign. But his, but his, I don't yeah, know, his channel, you'll either really like it or really really, not. it'll really offend you <laughs> one way or the other. Depending yeah. on your views. Depending on what kind of person. I just you sent you the yeah. I sent you the other day. Uh it's hilarious and you gotta like go a top watch gun it. Sketch. Yeah, it was like a spoof on Top Gun and he's like, you know, the main guy and he's got his Maverick, buddies with yeah. him and uh because he's been fighting this big legal battle with like Facebook and Twitter uh and YouTube because of uh on YouTube because of parody and some murky things that he thinks he's in the right, YouTube thinks he's in the wrong, whatever. Uh and then like the I don't want to get into it, but the yeah. deplatforming going on on Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. And so uh, there's these nameless uh, enemy fighters with just the, <laughs> the logo of Twitter and Facebook, like, on you know, their, on stamped their. on their helmets. <laughs> and uh, he's like fighting and all his buddies are going down. And then out of the sky comes the theme of the uh, skit is his uh, half Asian lawyer. Who is, who, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's his tag, and he comes soaring out of the sky and blows up the Twitter and Facebook guys, and like uh, pretends to sacrifice. It's hilarious. Yeah. Go to his channel and watch it because it's really, really funny. Uh, and I laughed my booty off oh my um, so much so that I sent it to Blake <laughs> because the production value was insane. It was really, really good. Well, Josh, yeah, there's my there's my three minute plug for Steven Crowder. You better I call me. I better yeah. get. I better get the mug club for free or something. Because, yeah, Alec, you're only allowed one plug per podcast, so that. Was <laughs> oh man, I don't know who else I would. Yeah, plug. we we plug ourselves, but Alec went out of his way to be an altruist and plug somebody else. Maybe we should do that, Josh. Yeah, I have I have never plugged another person. <laughs> well, we plugged Ty. You guys are so great, <laughs> selfish. I want great you to job, check out Ty. what I'm doing. We we plugged him. And we plugged Slice and Rice before. Yeah. yeah. Good folks over there. Yeah, I plugged a bunch of people in my VidCon vlogs. I got everybody's names and everybody's YouTube channels, and then I never heard from them again. Oh, so sad. Sometimes you're not okay. Once they got the plug out of you, they yeah. Well, no, no, dude. I remember. I remember. I met some of the most like okay. I met some really cool people at VidCon, and I met some of the most shallow people I've ever met in my life. There was one guy just walking around (laughs) handing out business cards and didn't ask people. And where were you? Okay, Alec. We're not we're not here to make we're not here to make a case of talking about a convention. <laughs> I was in California. Oh! There you go. This guy was handing out business cards to everybody. And he, he outstretches his hand to me 
And I said, uh, no, thank you. And he said, uh, why not? I said, because you haven't spoken to me. It's like, I don't know who you are. And he like, he looks at me with like this befuddlement. And then he holds out his hand again. And I said, fine. You just broke and, uh, California in that moment. Dude. He's like, wait, human human interaction? I'm sorry, like, but uh, like, I thought I thought that the vibe was like, you don't know who I am. No, like, no, it, it wasn't. Oh. It wasn't one of those. It was just like this guy who like he was just like, all right, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. It's like, what? Like you have to you have to sell me on it. You really have to sell me on a pitch sometimes. You know, it's like uh, I've gotten emails. Yeah, go ahead. Like, Blake, that man, that man saw you as yeah. a number. He just saw just he just saw a one walking down the street. And he was like, "Well, I'm gonna add him yeah, to my help ranks." Yeah, help me hit a hundred subscribers, guys. That's the ugliest thing about YouTube is that you can get caught up in just seeing people yeah. as numbers and like not as actual oh, yeah. people. And like, I feel like a lot of the video conferences like that just like shows off those kind of people, like exposes them oh. for who they are because like they'll walk up to you and just completely expect you to like uh, help boost them. And it's like I don't know you, dude. Yeah, like yeah, people you know who walk I mean? around like know. sub for sub. It's that's just... so stupid. Like, yeah, why would you do that? Well, because I feel like <laughs> if you're really going after the community aspect, then it, then it, you know, there's people that have common things that you do in the community, and you bond over those kinds, that kind of content that you make, and then you grow. You know, you join together and bring your, you know, when you plug people. And you bring your communities together, and they see their you, your viewers see their stuff, and their viewers see your stuff, and you grow together. And like when you start catching on like that, yeah, then you know that's that's the way I think the, that a platform like YouTube should be, um, you know, more of a community and not just well, whoever just has the, mo the most clout wins. And like, it's and just it's ultimately, it's ridiculous. like if you like the content or you like the person, you will keep watching. It's yeah. like you can't you can't force stuff like this. Like something like the thing like about content, you know, like not nearly as many people watch these podcasts as they do say the other sketches, which I totally understand. But like to those people who do, it's like, well, yeah, it's three. It's like two or three people that they probably well, well, don't more know, than likely don't know for an hour about like yeah, random but, like, things it just goes to show that like there are like 40 to 50 people out there like 40 to 50 views per podcast like roughly who like us enough to listen to these entire things of us just ranting and rambling they hear our incriminating thoughts they'll send it to cnn which is crazy yeah, yeah. sometimes i face, say things and i'm like man nobody will ever remember this nobody will ever hear it wrong yeah <laughs> well, do you, I, just been, I did like the Richard Nixon <laughs> Donald Trump <laughs> um, well Josh do you have any closing thoughts for us would you like to take us on the train back to home okay. I know um, I've got a plug I've got a plug uh, Alec inspired yeah. me but um, on Instagram check out at just Josh oh my God. <laughs> um, it's <laughs> Uh, it's a really quality Instagram account. Uh, he posts a lot of cool. You know, pictures. to be fair, your Instagram so, uh, is tagged yeah, just check in that the description out. of this video, Josh. I said all <laughs> what? our our Instagram handles and everything are tagged in the, the description of this video. They, oh, I know, I've seen, I've seen. Yeah, dude, self promotion. <laughs> the, I just must, I just must be chopped liver over <laughs> <here>. <laughs> chopped liver. Alec, what did you? What is your, <laughs> We we may we yeah, may we'll throw, throw your, your, we'll your social in media the, uh... in there. Your Facebook, your K I K, your Tinder account, your uh, your Grinder account, oh, dear Lord. My, your, <laughs> your MySpace, yeah, your MySpace account, um, your 4chan, your Mountain People Only, yeah, uh, uh, your Farmers Only, your, farmers only. Com, <laughs> your uh, Black People Meet dot com. Yeah. Your <laughs> all right, that's it. Alec, what race do you identify White. with? <laughs> because you're a brown boy, uh, you are. <laughs> I'm very, very tan naturally, um, but I am definitely white. <laughs> I have figured that out yeah. over the last few years, uh, just based off of my actions. My uh, actions fall in the very uh, white people category. I eat three gogurts a day. I floss 
daily the but Fortnite I, dance. Not I wake Fortnite. up and play with toys all day, and then I spend ten minutes in the shower thinking about. My and then life. I watch baseball. Yeah, and <laughs> that's about it. I shop solely at Whole Foods. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> now there's a there oh, are different gosh. kinds of white yeah, people. But there are very different it. kinds of white people. <laughs> Alex's skin is a little too dark yeah. for Whole Foods. Yeah, they'd kick me out if I went in there. <laughs> <laughs> was, oh my god! <laughs> it's like we don't serve your. All right, here. well, uh, Blake, do you have any closing? Um, this thoughts? has been Destination Unknown. Thank you so okay. much, Alec Kern, for joining us it's tonight. Been, it's been really cool. Uh, and if I don't know how generous your viewers are on this podcast, but. Uh, gocampchallenge.com and donate today we could really use your help yeah. uh, and it goes a long way to help the kids that come here uh, every summer so that would mean a lot to us and uh, or come out volunteer if you're in the area it would be really really great to have uh, some uh, some new faces around here and to get rid of my ugly face <laughs> so yeah but it's been really great so thanks heck yeah thanks, Blake if, and you're, Josh. if you're interested in that we'll uh, we'll, we'll do that in the, in the description we'll throw a link for and the website you, uh, you but yeah these have been a three three random white dudes talking about things you probably don't care about, and uh, we'll you, see you next you time. You all will see me very, very soon.